to let us pray our father and our god we thank you because you are god who rules in the affairs of men we thank you because we stand today by the grace of god it is because you are that we are the ancient of days we honor you we worship you Lord, I bring this assembly right now under the good auspices of the Spirit of God. I ask that your glory will tabernacle over this house this morning. In the name of Jesus, display your power, manifest your glory in the name of Jesus. Cause my heart to indict of a good matter and let my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer. So much depends on me. I so much depend on you. Help me to speak as your oracles and let your name be glorified. Prepare in our hearts a fertile soil to receive the seed of your word in the name of jesus let light light penetrate every darkness this morning and let jesus be glorified in jesus name we pray amen praise the name of the lord i forgot let's also celebrate god for our acts acting christ to save god bless you drama guys that was amazing praise god lady koro amen second samuel chapter 2 and verses, I'm sorry, chapter 23, verses 13 to 17. I'm talking about what I've titled water or blood. Look at your neighbor and say to them, water or blood. Then three of the 30 chief men went down at harvest time and came to David at the cave of Adullam and the troop of Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone will give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David will not drink it but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not blood? Or is this not the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he will not drink it. These things were done by the three mighty men. He said, Is this not the blood of the men who put their lives in jeopardy? Water or blood? Psalm 92 2 verses 5 and 6. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. How great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. Everything God does puts a lot of thought into them. Your thoughts are very deep. Water. Or blood hallelujah you know I consider it a privilege today to be standing here to preach to you another Thanksgiving message for me I see it as a demonstration of the mercy of God that that you are also here to listen to me some of you were here last year two years ago three years ago four years ago and God has been faithful now we all know the year has been we, we, we know how the year has been and all that has assailed us uh, in the year uh, COVID came, there was the protest, inflation jumped like twice this year, at least as far as I know. Uh, there was a shutdown of the economy at some point, there was depression, people lost their jobs and all of that. But the interesting thing is that we are still standing. You may think it is nothing, but I'm telling you it is something. Because if you go to the burial ground right now, there are many people who wish they were here today, but are not here. So if you are still standing, you have a reason to give thanks to God. Somebody say amen. The Bible says that a living dog is better than a dead lion. So as we approach this year's Thanksgiving celebration, uh, because of all of this, or in view of all of this, your Thanksgiving must be deliberate. It, it must be thoughtful. It must come from the place of knowledge. You must let it rise above the seeming setbacks and disappointments that you may have experienced this year. Uh, uh, God began to say to me, that this year's thanksgiving will be for the thoughtful thoughtful people he said a senseless man uh, does not know it because his thoughts are very deep god puts so much thought in what he does so it will take thoughtful people to recognize them and to appreciate him appropriately for the things that he has done so it will be for thoughtful people it will be for those who walk by faith and not by sight those who are persuaded about the sure faithfulness 
of our God that even when we are unfaithful, God remains faithful. It will be for those who have inner eyes, who see beyond what presents. People who can discern the finger of God even in situations that don't appear like what they want them to be. It will be for those people who can count their blessings and miss setbacks. That in spite of what has happened, they can point to the things that God has done in their lives. People who can count their blessings. Now, if, if, you, if you allow the devil, all he will want you to see this year are the things that didn't work out, are the prayers that were not answered, are the things that went south. If you allow the devil, he will occupy your mind with the things that did not happen and before you know you get to a place where you are depressed he wants you to occupy your mind with the bad news you heard or all the things going on on, uh, on social media or in the main, uh, mainstream media the devil wants to occupy your mind with those but if, if you look at it very well you realize that God has kept you how many of you will say God kept me God kept me. His mercy kept me. Uh, God has been good. Uh, God has answered prayers. He met a need this year. He protected. He delivered this year. He sustained you in spite of what you lost. I don't know what the year has been like for you, but I want you to know that it is by the grace of God that you are standing. The psalmist said, it is by the mercies of God that we are not consumed. In the book of Lamentation, the Bible says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It says, His mercies are new every morning. He actually began by saying, it is because of the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed. So I want you to know that you are listening to me today because the mercy of God has kept you. It's an invisible power of God. And so sometimes, we, we, because we don't see the invisible and we look out for the intangible, we miss the blessings of the Lord. We miss the goodness of God. We miss the faithfulness of God in our lives. Now, God gave me the theme uh, for this year's Thanksgiving, since last year, uh, December, usually when I go for my retreat, and, and God put it in, in, in my heart, and I'll tell us what it is later. And uh, I interestingly, as, as this year began to unfold, I started saying, God, I, I, <laughs> does it look like what is happening? And then God began to open my eyes that really what he wants to do with that word, that this year is going to test our capacity for gratitude. That God wants to, with all that has happened, God wants to test our capacity for gratitude. That is our gratitude circumstantial. Uh, is it dependent on what I see, what I feel, what I have, uh, all of that? Or is it dependent on the fact that you have a big God on your side? That you have a God who rules in the affairs of men in your life? Uh, does it depend on the fact that you are alive or is it dependent on the things that are happening? around you and i began to see ah indeed god is a wise god so god seeks unique praise this year unique unique praise uh, the one that looks beyond appearances and sees the uniqueness of god in the things that he does it will take people who can really see because you know what god has been working the book of Job, uh, Job said that he walks by my right, I do not see him. And he passes by my left, I do not perceive him. He said, he knows the way that I take. He said that one thing I am confident about is that when he is done with me, I will comfort as gold. He said, I may not, I may not have seen uh, what he's doing around me. I may not understand certain things happening, but he knows the way that I take. And when he is done with me, he will bring me forth as gold. And so we look at this place in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 23, uh, an interesting scripture. Uh, David had been anointed. Of course, this was towards the end of his life, but the historian is just reminding us, taking us back to this uh, point in David's life. And so David was in the cave of Adullam. He used to be a boy in David uh, in Saul's palace. He had been anointed, expecting uh, for the king to write his resignation letter someday, and he ascended the throne. But after many spears, David found himself in the cave of Adullam, anointed, but in the cave of Adullam. And the Bible says that uh, the pe people that gathered to him were disgruntled people, uh, the discouraged people, and indebted people. That they were the ones that gathered themselves to him. Uh, in the cave of Adullam. Now, when you think you have been anointed king, those are not the kind of people you want around you. Uh, but as they stayed with David, and as they experienced the grace of God upon his life, they became mighty men of valor. So David found himself in this uh, faraway land. Although anointed king, he was a fugitive. He had reasons to be bitter. 
because he had been kept away from Keith and Cain. He has missed family. He has missed, uh, even like we saw in that place, he has missed the basic necessities. He was looking for water. The basic necessities of the city of Bethlehem, his hometown. He had missed the basic necessities of his place. But one thing we never saw about David is that we never heard a word of complaint from David. In spite of all he was going through. And as I even look through the Psalms, as far as I can remember of the life of David, you never heard David complain. In fact, at one point he rebuked himself. He said, why are you downcast, oh my soul? He said, put your hope in God. He said, why are you downcast, oh my soul? This was a man that made thanking God a lifestyle. We never heard a word of complaint. In fact, we can learn a lesson about the attitude of gratitude or the attitude that produces gratitude from David. Now, what hits me... In this place, I'm having some echo. What hits me, guys, echo, 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 so please remove it. Now, what hits me in this place is the fact that David termed that water blood. Did you see it in that place? You guys talk to me. Did you see it in that place? He said, this is blood. Now, that, for me, is remarkable. He could have looked at it as, as just his men getting him water. But he chose to see it as blood. He saw it as extraordinary. He saw it as extraordinary. Now, this year has had a lot of ups and downs. And if you are not careful, it is easy to miss what God has done for you in this year and in previous years. And just think it's no big deal. David also could have said, yeah, what's the big deal? It's just water. Uh, is it not just my guys that got it for me? Uh, he could have said, well, I am the king elect. I deserve it. Uh, he could have said, well, I'm supposed to be on my throne in Bethlehem. Why make much ado about a bottle of water? He could have said all of those things. Yeah, they are my subjects. They are supposed to have done that for me. He could have developed a sense of entitlement, which many people have, which is what robs us of a spirit of gratitude. David could have said any of those, but David said, no, this water is blood. How do you see blood in water? How do you see blood in water? How do you see something precious out of the ordinary? How do you see richness from the common? How do you see something colorful and bright from something or water that is colorless and odorless? How do you see that? How do you see that? The capacity to look at water and see blood in it is the kind of thanksgiving that I'm talking about today. It is the, that is the spirit of the thanksgiving that God seeks this season. To look at water and see blood in it. It takes grace. That is the capacity. I pray that God will birth in our hearts today in the name of Jesus. It is that spirit that, that was in David. It was an uncommon spirit. It was, it was not usual. It was extraordinary. It was exceptional it was exceptional and so God told me that the theme for our Thanksgiving this year is exceptional 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 Thanksgiving exceptional I don't know they'll put the logo there you may not be have enough light uh, but you'll see it later exceptional 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 Thanksgiving God told me ahead I got this since last year that it is going to be an exceptional Thanksgiving. Exceptional. Ride with me. I'll take you even further. Exceptional. Exceptional as a word just basically means, or uh, to, exceptional Thanksgiving just basically means that God has done nothing ordinary in your life this year. That's what it simply means. Nothing ordinary has been done by God. Remember, the psalmist said that his works are great and his thoughts are very deep. In other words, before you see any great work of God in your life, a lot of thought, divine thought, went into it. So exceptional that God has not done anything ordinary in your life. Everything he has done is exceptional and God deserves exceptional thanksgiving. Now, exceptional means unusually good. It means not typical. It means outstanding. It means extraordinary. It means unprecedented, excellent, matchless, unexcelled, unparalleled, second to none. Second to none that everything that God has done. So if God has done exceptional things, God is expecting exceptional thanksgiving. What David did that day was exceptional. It was exceptional. I may talk about that next week. It was exceptional. You expected him to have drunk the water, but he did something exceptional. Why? Because he saw that water as exceptional. He saw blood 
in it. He saw blood in it. How did David come to this realization? How did David come to this realization? He thought of what the soldiers went through. He thought of it. He thought of it. He, he thought of what it took them to get that water. He thought of the dangers they exposed themselves to. He realized that these guys could have been killed. They fought battles. The Bible says they broke through the camp of the Philistines. Just three of them broke through a camp. David thought about all of that. He thought about the discomfort they put themselves through, that, that the reproach they must have endured. He realized that they could have died a thousand deaths just to bring him that jug of water. So he concluded that this is extraordinary. He said, this is exceptional. This is not ordinary. This is out of the usual. This is not regular. Whatever God has done is not regular. You know, I once said once that uh, you can look at your life as though nothing is special or look at your life as though everything was special. You can look at your life as though nothing, uh, that everything is ordinary or you can look at your life as though everything is extraordinary. Can look at this my suit. Somebody can call it ordinary, but I choose to call it extraordinary. Why? Because I know that something went behind the scenes to make this happen. You see, that's what we fail to see sometimes. What happens behind the scenes? That your car is an extraordinary car. That your wife, Dr. Maker, is an extraordinary wife. That your job is an extraordinary job. That your children are extraordinary children. That you can do this and breathe out. It is extraordinary that there is nothing about you that is ordinary. It takes the spiritual eyes, the eyes that appreciate or that understands value to see that. So David saw all of those and said, this is not ordinary water. I refuse to make common in my life the things that God has done for me. I refuse to see whatever he has done in my life as ordinary. None of his works in my life is normal or regular. They are all exceptional. They are all exceptional. Like I said, exceptional clothes, exceptional shoes, exceptional good health, exceptional promotion on your job, exceptional. There is nothing that God has done that is ordinary. No matter what the year has been like, you beat COVID. And you will keep beating it. No matter how long it lasts, you will keep beating it. We have overcome them. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Let me remind you, I don't know if anybody had experiences like this. When the news about COVID bombarded the social media, bombarded the news, the newspaper, and one day you wake up and your nose is running. How many of you are in fact, ah, I bet the thing not happen. I mean, did it happen to any one of you? And then you sneeze five times. Sia, 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 hey, hey. It's like the thing has happened. Oh. What did they say the number of NCDC is? How many of you went through that? You know, but God, I don't, know, I, I don't know how God did it, but God kept us. Hallelujah. He kept you through it. He preserved us. He protected us. We only heard about it, but he never came near us. Glory be to the God who reigns in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you got new jobs this year. How many of you got a job this year? Okay, so I can see hands. How many of you got a promotion this year? Okay, I can see hands. So, so sometimes we, don't, we just think God is not doing anything. How many of you got married this year? Hallelujah. I was expecting. If you did not stand up, I would have sent you out of church. <laughs> How many of you got a child this year? How many of you? Uh -huh. so, hallelujah. He got twins. Second set of twins. You need to show us how to do it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God has been good. And sometimes it, it, it just takes you pausing and looking to be able to see what God has done. It takes discerning eyes. It takes perceptive hearts. To see what God does as exceptional. If you only knew the story behind the story. If you only knew the story behind the story. You will thank God in an unusual way. You know something? We just see it as just a job. But if you knew the story behind the story. We only see it as well... I was sick and then God healed me. But if you only knew the story behind the story, that angels were commissioned. In some cases, that men were instructed, that God raised people, 
that a particular doctor was there at the right time, right, Chibuzo? They, were, they had almost given up on the child, but a particular doctor said, no, I'm staying on this. You, you will not know until you know the story behind the story. And some of you may not know Loretta, for me, she had died this year, basically, had died. So she also may not know the story behind the story. She had, she, she had basically had died, as it were, because they had rushed her to the hospital and they, 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 basically they had just given up. So I was preparing to go preach when we were still doing recording. And then they called me that, you know, basically, doctor had told me her kidneys were collapsing and all of that. In fact, she had not passed urine for how long? So they just concluded the kidneys had passed, had collapsed. So they were pushing her to the hospital where they had dialysis. So they moved her from the Maitama hospital and they, and they had gotten an ambulance. And they had taken her to that place. And as I heard that, the cameramen were waiting for me downstairs to record uh, the program. And I just said I was going to for the next 45 minutes. And then I called Missy B. I called Joel. I began to raise prayer, people to pray. I called the man guys, right? Did I call you guys? Right. Mariam, yeah? I called people. I said, let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray. You, you see, until you know that that was happening in the background. See what God did. By the time they got there, they were waiting for, by the time the, whatever they call the specialist, what is this? Kidney specialist. A kidney on the, a an endo endocrinology, endocrinologist, endocrinologist. By the time the guy came, when they were about to come and fix the machine, she passed urine. And that was why that was never needed again. And from the, from the jaws of death, basically, God snapped her. God snatched her back. Until you know the story behind the story. Until you know the story behind the story see if you don't know the story behind the story you will just see Mode, uh, Mordecai riding the king's horse a commoner on the king's horse and oh he's the one riding the horse uh, yeah it's one of those things no it is not one of those things if you know the story behind the story you will know that that night the king could not sleep you will know that that night the king said I can't sleep and I don't want music I want to read the books and not just any book I want to read the history books the journals so you will see all the things that God was doing in the background. And while, they, while the king was doing that, the Bible said his eyes fell on the place of the story of Mordecai, what he did. And then the king asked, did we do anything for this person? All of those were happening in the background. And said, no, say, who is in the garden that I can use to honor the man? And the Bible said, at that time, Haman was coming in. And then they sent Haman to go and do that. And you need to go and read that story. And then before you know it, you saw Hezekiah, uh, Mordecai on the horse. And they are shouting, this is how the king honors a man whom he likes. This is how the king honors the man whom he honors or respects or whatever. If, if you didn't know the story behind the story, and that is, that, is, that is what is killing us. We don't know the story behind the story. So it is just ordinary. That's why we don't testify. That's why we don't declare what God has done for us. Because it is just ordinary. It is just ordinary. And for you, well, I'm waiting for the big one. I'm telling you, all his works are great. And his thoughts are very deep. His thoughts are very deep. If you had a ball and it came and it went, it is not ordinary. It is not ordinary. Because some balls have grown and they've become malignant. All kinds of things have happened to people. People have driven to the hospital and they were detained there. So there is nothing like I went and I came back and you think it is usual. None of his works. And the same thing we do with people. Somebody does something for you and you just say thank you. And you don't know the story behind the story. You don't know if they inconvenience themselves. You don't know the sacrifice that was made. You don't know a personal seat, a personal need rather, that they put aside just to be able to help you. And we treat ourselves like that because we have developed an entitlement mentality. I will praise him when he does that big one. Until this happens, God should not expect praise from me. Until that happens, God should not expect me to thank him. God is still owing me something. I, 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 I submit to you this morning. God owes you nothing. He has done all things things well he has done all things well God has been good and so this year I'm going to I want my thanksgiving to be such that my dance 
will have a story behind it. If everything God has done for me has a story behind it, my dance will have a story behind it. My jump will have a story behind it. My spinning will have a story behind it because I know what God delivered me from. I know how God has sustained me. I know how God has kept me. In fact, I was telling the staff someday that since church started, I think it was only one Sunday that sickness had kept me from preaching. Only once. At other time, maybe I'm on break. How does God keep you that healthy? And now another one happened this uh, week. I was sharing with uh, Dr. Emeka. Uh, I, I, had, um, I, had, I usually would go for my annual medical checkup, which is really a drag. You know? And I had gone uh, previous years ago, two years ago, sorry. Uh, they had told me my prostate gland was bigger than it should be. And then next, last year, it had increased than it should be. And uh, they booked for me to see the viral urologist. <laughs> I'm just giving them all kinds of names. A urologist. You know, and that because I'm just lazy, not because it's a wrong thing, it's actually good to go. And it was just laziness that never made me to go see the person. And then I will be in the, and maybe guys will understand, I'll wake up in the night like seven times, just be, between night and morning. Between night and morning. And then sometime this year, I just began to say to myself, you know, anytime I go to the, to the restroom, let that be my time for confession. So I just place my hand on my tummy and I'll say, I don't know what the right size should even be. I'll just say, I command it to go back to the healthy size healthy size. I invade you with the life of God, with the zoe of God, the spirit. I did that every time I went to the restroom, I did that. So just uh, two, three days ago, I went for my medicals again, and then the lady was scanning me. She said, did you see the urologist last year? I said, no. She asked that question like three times. He said, you, you didn't see the urologist last year? I said, no. You have not seen the I said, no. I said, why are you asking? Say it has shrunk in size. And all the symptoms, in fact, this last night, I didn't even wake up at all to go to the restroom. Max once. Because there is a God. So I can look at it as usual, but I don't know what God did, when he did, how an angel, whatever, what the Spirit of God. So I want to live my life knowing that there is something happening behind the scenes that made that happen. Because there are other people who prayed, but nothing happened. So you must live your life like that. You know... There's something that really scares me. It is the spirit, I've been talking about it, it actually scares me. It is the spirit that is waiting for that thing and loses focus of all those other things. It is the spirit of Haman. And I pray that God will take it away from amongst us. Esther chapter 5, the book of Esther chapter 5 verse 8. I want you to follow me. Esther, Esther, fantastic. Esther chapter 5, verse 8. Look at this. I want everybody to look at this. It's not in your Bible or on the screen, but everybody must be looking at Esther chapter 5. Now, the backdrop to this story, Queen Esther had invited King uh, uh, Ahasuerus, Ahasuerus for a party. And he had invited a man, she had invited a man called Haman to be at that party. So they are just eating the meal. And uh, as they were about to go, the queen began to talk to the king again. In all the land, this man had 120 provinces under him. This king. And then his wife, the queen. And then of all the men in these 120 provinces, it was Haman that was in this party. Just party for four. Party for three. So as they were about to go, Queen Esther goes to the king again. Sir, if I have found favor in the sight of the king... And if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, then let the king and Haman, what are all those things in the background, the logo? Let the king and Haman come to the banquet which I will prepare for them, and tomorrow I will do as the king has said. Verse 9. So Haman went out that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, and that he did not stand or tremble before him, he was filled with indignation against Mordecai. He had forgotten everything that just happened. As he just saw that one man, everything, all the joy just disappeared. Continue. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself, restrained himself, and went home, and he sent and called for his friends and his wife, Zeresh. Then Haman told them of his great riches, see? Be counting all the Lord has done for this guy. The, he told them of his great riches, one, the multitude of his children, two, in everything in which the king had promoted him. Now, like I said, he had just been recently promoted to number two man in 120 provinces. And how he had advanced him above the officials and servants of the king. 
One man, all of this, blessed in everything. Verse 13. Verse, two, yeah, verse 13. Yet, all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. All this, all these things, nothing, just this one. Do you have the other versions I sent? They are at the very bottom of the list. Did you, did you get them? Okay, see as many as you can put. Just that verse 13, the A part. Or maybe I should read it. He said, all this avails me nothing. Okay? He said, still, none of this satisfies me. Since I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the gate. Another one, just the first part. He said, none of this satisfies me. Another one, but all this loses its meaning. Another one. But none of this thing makes me happy. Another one. And whereas I have all these things, I think I have nothing. Whereas I have all these things, I think I have nothing. I think God is owing me. Don't let God be angry with you. Don't misbehave. And be, you know, nye, 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 if only, if only. The man, the man had been promoted. He said, I have multitude of children. I've been advanced above all the servants, all the men in this place. But all these things don't make me happy. They are as nothing to me. I find no satisfaction in them. Be just because of that one. If I can have just that one, then I will be a happy man. I will be a happy man if I can have that one. You know what has happened? Haman has looked at all the blessings of God in his life and made them water. Colorless. Tasteless. Odorless. It's just water. Promoted to number two man in the country. Colorless. Have children. Some people have done seven IVFs. No child. Tasteless. You see, all these things mean nothing to me. Because that one has not happened. But on the other hand, David took a, a keg of water and he called it blood. He called it colorful. Called it beautiful, rich life. In a keg of water. In the little. Do you see why God says, this one is a man after my own heart. Because he values the doings of God in his life. So you can look at everything that God has done for you and call them nothing. And be expecting more. I am praying that that spirit will be chased out of this congregation this season in the name of Jesus. That that spirit will not be found in your home. That spirit that is complaining, that is grumbling, that is waiting for another thing, that is ignoring all that God has done, that considers all that God has done as nothing. But is waiting for that extra thing. He said, all these things to me mean nothing mean nothing and you know what happened to him he eventually lost his position and he lost his head and he lost all those children they hung all of them and killed all of them because like they say he who is not grateful for life will be grounded for life if you are not grateful for life if you are not grateful for the things that god has done if you can't see the finger of god at work in your life if you can't see the faithfulness of God, if you can't see the goodness of God displayed around you, you will lose the things that you already have. The guy lost everything. How do you see what God has done in your life? Is it water? Or is it blood? Is it water? Or is it blood? Some of you started a new project this year. Some of you concluded a project this year. Is it water or is it blood? Some of you, you didn't go to the hospital this year. Is it water or is it blood? Some of you were always in the hospital last year, two years ago, but this year, God has kept you. Is it water or is it blood? Is it water or is it blood? Some of you had new clients this year. Is it water? Is it blood? You registered your business this year. Is it water? Or is it blood? You know, you must learn to thank God for what he's doing on your way to where you are going. Because if you miss those ones, you may never get to that one. And so you must learn to celebrate God for his faithfulness. That every day you wake up, it is a gift. Every day you experience the goodness of God is a gift. Every day you put food in your stomach, it is a gift. You know, many of us have moved on to the next thing. But God is saying, no, even for that, I want you to thank me. So this year's Thanksgiving, it will be for people who can see, 
We will value what God has done for them. We will, we will ascribe great worth to what God has done for them. It is for the deliberate and it is for the thoughtful. God has done great things. God has done mighty things. God has been faithful. God has been good. God has been kind. I don't know why you are the one who is married, but it is the faithfulness of God. Even though you have siblings that are not married yet, it is the faithfulness of God. It is the faithfulness of God. I don't know why you are the one with children, but it is the faithfulness of God. I don't know why. I don't know why you are the one who survived that car accident some years ago. It is the faithfulness of God. It is the faithfulness of God. Armed robbers came around. Yes, they shouldn't have come, but they came. But God kept you. It is the faithfulness of God. The things you lost, you recovered. It is the faithfulness of God. For some of you, a loved one left your life, walked away or something, but God has kept you. You thought you would, you thought you would break down and scatter, but God has kept you. It is the faithfulness of God. It is the faithfulness of God. And you must learn to thank God for the things that he has done. Time is against me. I need to round up and stop. Now, in the book of 1 Thessalonians, as I begin to round up, it is interesting. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Paul said there, he said, in everything, if they can put it there, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will. So when you are giving thanks, you are in the will of God. When you are not thankful, you are outside the will of God. Why will God say, this is my will? The word will there also means that God wills that you do it. I will in it that you will thank me. That's, that's what that place is saying. It is my will. It is what I will that you do. It is the will of God in Christ Jesus that you give thanks in everything. In everything. When it makes sense. When it doesn't make sense. In everything. When you don't understand everything. In everything everything that you give thanks why will god say that why will god say that it, it is because there are certain variables that god understands that you know nothing about there are certain things that god sees that you do not see that's why he's saying Ave, you will not have all the details but just still thank me you may not know joseph you may be in the pit right now but just still thank me have it all figured out thank me in everything, thank me, thank me. Another reason God may have said that or must have said that is because God also knows the other option that your life could have taken, the other direction your life could have taken. Do you know that if you had lost a parent and maybe seven or ten, your life could have gone a different direction? That if something had happened, so some people had just met a bad friend, like, like a David's son, Amnon, Amnon, whatever his name is, had a bad friend and he led to his death. A teenage pregnancy could have messed up everything. God, saw, God knows all the other options open to your life. The different directions your life could have gone. But he has kept you till this point. And that's why I say you may not understand everything, but thank me. It is my will for you to thank me. You may not understand it. You may not understand it. When we get to heaven, Thanksgiving will never cease in our mouths. Because we'll not begin to see that night that you slept and woke up. In fact, your challenge was that you didn't sleep enough. But meanwhile, perhaps there were armed robbers on that street. And said, let's go to this house. And another one said, no, 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 let's go to the next one. And that's how they missed your house. And you knew nothing about it. And you knew nothing about it. And you knew nothing about it. It may have been people who said, let us be on that road to kidnap people. And by the time they came out, it was your car. That was the last one they went before, that, that passed, I'm sorry, before they came out. And you knew nothing about it. And you knew nothing about it. See, we are too focused on what we can see that we ignore the things that we do not see. And so God says, it is my will that you thank me. So this Thanksgiving, find a reason, find the will to thank God because he has been a good God. He has done all things well. All I just want to do today is to just prepare your heart to give you reasons for you to see. I want to change your ability to see. Your ability to see. So he said, it is my will that you thank me. You know why he also said that? Because God knows the people that wish they have what, what you have. Do you know that what, what you have right now is somebody's prayer point? Do you know that? Because God knows that. God is the one receiving the request now. 
Do you know how many people are saying to God, Dr. Maker, give me a good wife, give me a good wife. He hears that request maybe like a million every day for 365 days. And then is this somebody who has? And the person is just like, well, what's the next thing? Let's move on. So God sees that. And so he says, thank me. So he's, he, he knows the people who wish they, ha you, they have what you have. He also knows the people who wish you don't have what you have. He knows that people that are like envy, out of envy and all of that and say, why, why is it they want? Why, why I, I wish I had that? That if it was left to them, you wouldn't have what you have today. God sees all of those people. But he still says, thank me. He also sees those who think you don't deserve the things that have happened in your life. He sees all of those things. And yet those things have happened in spite of what men think. In spite of who is against it. In spite of ill will and soulish prayers against you. Do you know there are people who actually pray soulish prayers? One day I'll teach about that. Negative, demonically engineered prayers. And wish certain things don't happen. And yet, in spite of it, no wonder the psalmist said, I slept and I awoke because the Lord sustained me. You don't just know what it takes to sleep and to wake up. And so God says, I will that you thank me. This thanksgiving, as I close, whose will will you do? Whose will will you fulfill? Will it be the will of your unmet needs? Will it be the will of your flesh? Will it be the will of your fears? Will it be your own will? Whose will will you do? Will you fulfill this thanksgiving? God is looking for exceptional thanksgiving. And it is the kind of thanksgiving that is born out of finding or placing value on everything that God has done in your life. That you go and count your blessings and name them one by one. And thank God for the story. And that's one thing about me. Interestingly, when somebody gives you something, if I have a tie, if it's 10 years old, I remember who gives it to me. And sometimes I tell them it, it, it blows their minds. And that's how God wants us to be. To know, to remember, to remember the story behind everything. May God replace every heaviness in your spirit this season and place in you the garment of gratitude of joy, of thanksgiving, a spirit of rejoicing. May he clothe you this season so that come the 29th, your dance will be the best, your jump will be the highest, your shout will be the loudest, your giving will be the most, that you will be the most expressive of gratitude. And another thing I forgot to say, you know another reason why God says in everything, thank me? Because he also knows the potential of thanksgiving. He knows that thanksgiving can open doors. The Bible says, enter into the gates with thanksgiving. You can thank your way into another level of God's presence, blessings, goodness in your life. Glory be to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Let every head be bowed. Quickly, 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 quickly. I want to pray right now. And I want to pray for somebody who came to church today. And you came heavy. You're, you're just weighed down. You're, you're just weighed down. In fact, you came here sluggishly. Somebody dragged you here. And all of that. But God is saying, uh, you know what? I brought you here for a purpose. I brought you here because I have a plan for you. I brought you here because I am not done with you yet. In fact, today will mark the beginning of the unfolding of my good plans for you. So today is not an ordinary day. If you went to heaven's calendar, today was marked with your name on it. God had a plan in mind for you for today. He wants to encounter you today and you encounter him. He wants to start something new in your life today. And you know what? For all that God has done and all that he has kept you to do and to uh, kept you from and kept you for, it is just for this moment that you come to a place where you can lift your heart and lift your hands before God and say, God, I may not have money, I may not have the finest of dance steps, but I give you my heart. I give you my life as the greatest form of thanksgiving today. God just wants somebody's life to be just offered to him. Just offer your life to him and say, God, take me, take me. Take me, just as I am. I give myself to you. Take me, take me. You are here this Sunday morning. You say, Pastor, everything you have said today resonates with my spirit. But I just still feel a heaviness in my spirit. I feel so disconnected from God. This God that you are saying we should give thanks to. 
that we should appreciate. I lack the, the, the mechanism. I, I, I lack the, 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 the strategy or the ways to thank him. I don't know him enough to thank him well. But today, I want you to pray for me. I want you to come to, into that place where my life becomes one with him. Where I know him for myself. Where I live for him. Where my life becomes a thanksgiving unto God. I'm going to pray for you. And that spirit of heaviness be lifted off of you. And the joy of the Lord will flood your heart. Wherever you are in this place, I'll pray for you where you are. All heads bowed, every eye closed. If you are that person, lift up your hands now. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Right now. Right now. Right now. Satan, take your hands off of them. In the name of Jesus. There's a hand over there. Any other person? Any other person? Lift your hands. Well, it's okay. It's okay. Anybody? Anybody? I thought I saw a hand. Anybody? Okay, over there. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Any other person? Any other person? Any other person? Don't come and go back the same way you came. There is something behind or beyond this decision. You need to make this decision for the next level or the next thing that God wants to do in your life. If you are that person, just lift up your hands and I will pray for you. Any other person? Any other person? Thank you over there, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Now, if you have your hand up, just stand up where you are and lift up your hands and I will pray for you. Just stand up, my brother. Just stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, my brother at the back there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you still struggle to stand up, just stand up and join them. Just stand up and join them. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up both your hands to God and say after me. Lift up both your hands to God. Say, Father, today I come just as I am. I receive Jesus the Son of God into my heart right now. By faith, I believe He died for my sins and I receive Him as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. Say, Satan, I cut off every relationship I have with you. I break every covenant I have with you. Now a child of God, I will live for Jesus. I will honor Him with my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Keep standing. I'll pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, can drop your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this, your sons. I thank you for the mercy of God that is extended towards them in rich proportions right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the yoke of Satan broken off of their lives. Thank you for every heavy burden that is lifted off of their shoulders. In the name of Jesus, every yoke across your neck, I break it and I destroy it by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, where the devil has kept you in chains, where the devil has kept you depressed, where the devil has kept you defeated, the joy of the Lord floods your heart right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I liberate you from the power of Satan. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that whatever has been working against you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit begins to work in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Those who have arisen against you are falling right now for your sake. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak God's blessing upon you. In the name of Jesus. And I declare that God will keep you till he comes. Till Jesus comes. To the glory and honor of his name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Thank you very much for praying. Now if you quickly look, there's just a friend, a minister behind you, beside you, behind you as the case may be. They'll just quickly take you to the back and pray with you some more. There's anything uh, bothering you, they know what to do. They can agree with you in prayer and watch what God will do in your life. It will fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Saints of God, let us rejoice and celebrate God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Exceptional Thanksgiving this year. Begin to think about it. Begin to go home and chronicle what God has done in your life. Get a paper, get a pen and begin to write them down. And it will surprise you indeed what the Lord has done. So we declare our season of Thanksgiving open uh, from uh, this Wednesday. Uh, we begin to testify, we begin to celebrate, we begin to dance at our image. Don't let this season pass without you declaring what God has done in your life. If you understand that there is a story behind everything, you will declare 
the goodness of God.